Now, if you're using this as your answer, you have to make sure that you have, have your picture so they know what theta represents. Because theoretically, you could have described the direction with this angle. Yeah. Um, so you have to, have to know from your picture what your angle is. So remember that we could have drawn a different triangle that looked like this. We could have drawn the y component first, and then the x component. Then the overall vector would have looked like this. Then we would have ended up figuring out the angle with the vertical. So different people could kind of get different answers here, but their answers would be consistent. They're just focusing on different angles. Right. So you just have to make sure your picture is clear so that the TA knows that you're giving the right answer. So if they had asked you for find the x and y components of the net force, then this would be a good answer. Mm -hmm. But if they ask you for find the magnitude and direction of the net force, then this is probably what they're going for. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. So again, we've seen you can indicate the direction of components with signs but you indicate the direction of an, of an overall vector with an angle. This doesn't have a sign because it's an overall vector. Yeah, that seems like a lot of work, but these are actually very typical of the problems in the exam and on the homework, so it's important to practice these enough so that uh, you can get through it in a reasonable amount of time without getting confused, because you are very likely to see these problems uh, on the test. And this, the same method applies to other things too, other than force, so it's important that we went through this. So um, one thing we saw is we don't actually need the distance triangle here. We have all the information we need here. Um, here. In fact, there is no distance triangle. It, it, it's not really clear what the distance yeah. triangle would be because this is the net force that involves all of these different charges. So there really isn't a distance triangle. All we have is a force triangle, but fortunately we have all the information that we needed. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, since we knew all three sides, we could have used sine, cosine, or tangent. It's probably more conventional to use tangent, uh, but it's perfectly okay to use the sine. All right, well, that's a, a, a lot of stuff. So what we learned here is how to find a net force, a net electric force in two dimensions. How do you find a net electric force in two dimensions? Well, first of all, you have to find each of the individual forces. And you break them into components and add them up. How do you break the individual forces into components? Well, each individual force gets a pair of triangles. It gets a force triangle and a distance triangle. Here, this other for, um, force got a force triangle and a distance triangle. Um, once you break them into components, you can add the components together. And then, if necessary, you can make one more triangle for the overall vector, which allows you to go from the components of the overall vector to the net force and to find the angle. Okay, good. Uh, and we saw when you're doing trig, leave out the signs. But when you're adding the components, it's crucial to put in the signs. Also, it looked like um, you were not plugging in any of these charges into Coulomb's law. That is, when you plugged in uh, this number to Coulomb's law, you didn't plug in negative 2. We saw how Coulomb's law is just about magnitudes, so don't put in the, the sign of the charge, because we already figured out the signs of the forces separately anyway. Okay. Let's sketch out in words how we would find the net force on charge two. Okay. Um, so the force of one on two is um, up. up and to the right. Okay. That's a good start. Um, and so you would take those two vectors separately and break them up into their x and y components. And then also into um, so distance, a distance triangle for each of them. Good. Um, and then you would use the relationship between the distance triangle and the. Okay, the that's very good. Now there's one trick here that oh. I haven't mentioned. I mean, not the direction, but the, the sign. 
That's right. That's right. Good. Now, what's the big trick here that's going to save us a lot of time, though? Oh. Or a little time. Yeah. So how does that save us time? Um, the, the X components are going to cancel out. That's right. So what will be, what's going to be the net force in the X component? Zero. Yeah, zero. So there are some homework problems that might ask you for the net force on the X component here, and the answer is zero. Or if you're writing the overall thing, you would write zero X hat to show that that component is zero. Mm -hmm. So all we have to do here is the Y components. Are the Y components going to cancel? Um, well, yeah, I think so. Well, uh, oh, actually, no, they wouldn't cancel. No. They might be, sorry, they wouldn't cancel. But they yeah, might be in fact, cool. is the net force Y going to be up or down? Um, yeah, it's clear here. Both of these are pointing up, so they're not going to cancel. There's going to be an upward Y force. Mm -hmm. we, we should be clear. Y is the X force that's going to cancel. Well, the X component here is to the left, and the X component here is to the right, yeah. but because these charges are the same, their magnitudes will be the same. So since they have equal magnitudes but opposite directions in the X component, the X components will cancel, so we don't need to bother calculating them. Mm -hmm. But we are going to have to calculate the Y components. But we can save time there, too, because we really only have to do one of the charges again, right? Yeah. And then just multiply by two, since yeah. these two charges are the same. So that would save you a lot of time here. So I wanted to point this out, because this is likely to come up again. You should always check for symmetry. Mm -hmm. The symmetry might save you time, because you might know ahead of time that something is zero. Or it might save you time, because you might know that two things are the same. And you can just figure out one of them and multiply by two. Mm -hmm. And you might see some other problems where maybe the net force is zero at both components. Um, like I said, you want to be careful, though. Oftentimes, people think that things cancel when they don't. Remember that a second ago, for a second, you might have thought that the Y components were going to cancel here. So you have to be very careful to only think that things are going to cancel when they really will. Well, the best thing is to actually write down the directions of the individual forces, mm -hmm. and then it's a lot clearer when things will cancel and when they won't. Now, the X components here are not just canceling because one is left and one is Y. They're canceling because they also have equal magnitudes, because they're coming from equal charges. Okay. If I change this into a positive 7, then nothing would cancel, and we have to do everything out like we did before. All right, one reason to mention that is the bad news is that on the test of the homework, you might see some problems with um, three or four different forces, not just two. How can the instructor possibly expect you to finish it when there's so many forces? Well, there's going to be a lot of symmetry built in. Yeah. And if you try to figure out everything, you'll waste the whole test on that. Yeah. So if there's lots of different charges, you definitely have to check for the ones that are going to cancel, or otherwise you'll waste a lot of time doing, uh, doing calculations. Okay, does that make sense? Uh -huh. All right, so those are the basic ideas for using Coulomb's law to find electric force. Okay. Um, so we saw how to work with that in one dimension and in two dimensions. In two dimensions, we saw how we use our similar triangles, the force and the distance triangles, to break things into components before we can add them uh, together.